Welcome back to the News at 10. Let's get a wrap-up of international news. Joyce Ohaja is in London, around the world in five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom in London. We begin tonight in Ethiopia, where two black box flight recorders have been recovered from the wreckage of the Ethiopian Airlines passenger jet that crashed on Sunday, killing all 157 people on board. The plane came down just six minutes after takeoff from Addis Ababa en route to the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. All that remains of the airliner lies scattered over a wide area after it shattered into many pieces on impact. The victims on board came from 33 countries and as Red Cross workers sift through the wreckage, urgent investigations have begun into the cause of the crash. This had been one of the latest Boeing 737s, the MAX 8, and it is the second of this model to have crashed in the past six months. In October, a Lion Air flight in Indonesia came down soon after takeoff, killing 100 108 passengers and crew. Concerns about the safety of the plane have led Ethiopian Airlines to be one of a number of companies around the world to have grounded its fleet pending the result of the investigation. This does not mean that the incident was related with defects on this specific fleet, but we have taken this as an extra safety precaution. China's civil aviation regulator has followed suit, which has meant the grounding of more than a quarter of the global fleet of Boeing 737 MAX 8s. Some of those on board the Ethiopian flight were United Nations staff heading to Nairobi for the UN Environment Programme Assembly. Their absence was marked with a one-minute silence at the start of the conference. And now to the UK and the start of a crucial week that will determine whether Britain will indeed withdraw from the European Union as scheduled at the end of March. There is still a great deal of uncertainty whether Prime Minister Theresa May will be able to get her divorce treaty approved by the British Parliament in a vote on Tuesday. And an ever-mounting chorus of conflicting views both in Westminster and beyond. Mrs May's Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt. To remember that if it fails, People aren't going to afterwards say it was this person's fault or this group of people's fault. They're going, to say, they're going to say there was a party that promised to deliver Brexit. We put them into number 10 and they failed. Yvette Cooper, MP for the opposition Labour Party. Theresa May needs to accept that her approach is not working. As Prime Minister, she needs to show leadership and reset the debate. And a summing up from Brussels, the European Commission's chief spokesperson, Margarita Schinas. We are committed to ratifying this deal before the 29th of March. It is now for the House of Commons to take an important set of decisions this week. And from the streets, the voices of some of the people. Get on with it, do a good deal, get the whole border in Ireland sorted out and just get on with it. So at the end of the day, March, is it the 29th? We should be out. That's it. S swim or sink, then. Now to Venezuela and the continuing crisis caused by the blackouts, which have plunged the country into a fifth day of power cuts and chaos. The power outages have impacted on every aspect of people's lives, and there are reports that they are causing deaths too, with hospitals struggling to maintain essential services. Fury and frustration on the streets of Caracas, the National Guard rounded up more than 40 people believed to have been involved in the looting of local shops. And in other stores without refrigeration, already scarce supplies of food are left rotting on the shelves. Two Belgian women who joined Islamic State in Syria are appealing against a court decision to refuse to allow them to return home with their six children. Tatiana Vieland and Bushra Abulalal, both aged 26, are now living in Ain Issa camp in northeast Syria after fleeing the conflict zone and surrendering to Kurdish forces. But I think we are already punishing for our, getting punished for our mistakes by being here. We are here for one month, for one year and a half, and this is really, really torture, mental torture, physical torture. Both their husbands were killed in the fighting, and they now say that although it will be heartbreaking, they are prepared to send their children to Belgium for a better life and stay behind if that is the only option. And finally, an example of extreme windsurfing. 
In the icy and stormy sea off northwest Ireland, some of the world's best and hardiest windsurfers took to the waves. And that's your international news around the world in five. Thanks a lot, Joyce. And just in one of the states where the senatorial election results is still remains uncertain is Imo State, where the current governor, Rocha Sokrocha, had been announced winner by the resident electoral commissioner under Juris. Looking at the website of INEC, the governor's name is not listed among other winners in the just concluded National Assembly election. Uh, the INEC national chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, had said that politicians who attack or compel INEC officials to announce results under duress will not be rewarded with certificates of return. And the main news again. INEC has declared governorship results for six states inconclusive. The states are Sokoto, Plateau, Bochi, Adamawa, Benue and Kano. That is the news of 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.